So part two of our debate, Vida, let's get that right, is uh, joining us. And this is your 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 name is, and, and this is what you do. Yeah. Tell us a bit about you or your character or your persona. Well, I'm, I'm a drag queen. Uh, I think I was the first Manx drag queen. Um, I think I started about seven years ago. So I'm Vida Le Fierce, come see my shows, give me gigs, etc., etc. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a singing queen. Do you do uh, yeah? You do a pub once, is it once a month thing. There's a or more. Uh, yeah, first Saturday of every month. So tonight I'm at the Saddle. Yeah, um, which is always so much fun. The monthly Rainbow Night. It is always packed. It is so much fun. Um, if you're a fan of good music, um, a drag queen belting out some classic diva hits, like. All sorts of campery and fun, then come down, it's amazing. Now, some people might be amazed that this is even, they've probably never even heard about it, and then go, wow, this is amazing for the other man. Any kickbacks at all in this? Are everyone having a good time, or you've any problems at all? I very rarely get any kind of kickbacks, really. It's, um, well, no one's going to start on a seven foot drag queen. Um, they're either very brave or very stupid. <laughs> Without heels, um, And uh, I, when I first started out, I had some girls who were difficult, but that was more booze related difficult and they were just poorly behaved um but no there's there's no actual problems and i always uh when i'm in drag sometimes once in a while people will have questions and uh like oh do you want to be a woman and this and that and like why why are you wearing women's clothes and i never turn down questions i encourage people to ask questions because it shows a willingness to understand rather than make assumptions so I will always encourage questions. Mm-hmm. Um, so if they want to ask questions, as long as I'm not literally stepping onto the stage, if they want to ask questions while I'm sort of out and about with the crowd, then I totally encourage that because if I can use my platform to raise understanding, then I feel it's my duty as a drag queen to do that. So, mm-hmm. you know, and not just understanding of drag, but of wider LGBTQ plus issues. So I think it's very, very, very important the questions are encouraged and you can have those conversations with people. Okay. Now, we're going to touch on this business that's been going in all the you know, media about a, a certain, is it like, that's what it's called, nightclub. Please don't, don't get us into trouble, though. Uh, and, we, <laughs> and I had obviously give a right to reply to the owner at some point if he wants to come on. But it, it, it hasn't played well in the, in, the, in the media. It seems to have, hasn't played well on social media either. But you, you're, you're very closely involved in this one, I'm guessing. Cause it's a place you used to be fr- you know, frequenting, didn't you? Used to you play there. Well, yeah, <laughs> I started my drag career there um, a long time ago, and um, yeah, there were um, imperfections, shall we say, back then. I, I better explain what they're saying is no PDA uh, in public well, or as I, un- as I understand yeah. it, and I'll throw these two away for a minute. <laughs> As I understand it, because I'm, since I'm the more outspoken and I don't really care, is he, two months before the event for this PDA, whatever nonsense that he created was, he shouted on Facebook that he's owning a pride party. When you do that, you expect that the LGBTQ people will go to that venue, mm-hmm. party like it is a pride event, and then to stop two girls from kissing each other at this festival that he wanted the pink pound, the pink money, mm-hmm. to keep them probably going. He, uh, he, he told them, he told them t- to, to behave, and that is wrong. If you're going to hold a pride festival in any venue, you've got to expect people will kiss, people will own that, and none of this nonsense that he's put out now, that they were groping each other, it's all lies, he's twisting it all. It's all because a complaint was made to the police and to the equality. Now this man is shouting for equality 2021. He's obviously maybe drinking too much, I do not know. Okay, again, but, allegedly. Yeah, <laughs> but basically, the game, you know, if, if he wants to come out with this rhetoric and this nasty behaviour, then I suggest the gays go and spend their pink pound somewhere else where they will be appreciated. Well, obviously, we, we name the place, with Guys and Dogs, which obviously it's, it's everywhere, it's been in the press and everything, but that was a very much a, was it not a, a 
a gay, gay venue or was it just a gay friendly venue? It was a gay, to my, my knowledge, it was a gay friendly venue. Mm. When I started with Danny and Graham, they came to me and asked for me to put a letter in because I was knowing in those days who I was. And I put a letter in to support them for a license for the LGBTQ. Mm. And then I went into a mixed venue and they ran it differently than what I thought. So. Yeah. You would think I was actually there the night I was doing the entertainment the night really? the, the oh. kiss scandal took place, and it's because of that that it was my last performance in there, mm. because I didn't comfortably feel like it was nothing graphic. Honestly, it was there was not a scene made. It wasn't actually that busy when it happened because I I remember, and I actually know the two individuals involved who were told off, and they they're, they're really sweet quite shy people and it just wouldn't have been anything graphic and it was literally you know a happy moment you know where they felt safe the weird, do you think it, it seemed like that then it, it's been escalated i think the facebook yeah. comments haven't helped what at happened, all have they well it was it was back in 2017 and i actually you know when it when it all sort of blew up then in a smaller way I actually sort of thought, do you know what, after the way it was handled, I can't, in good conscience, keep offering my services to a venue that would, that would treat people like that. So I quietly just left and never went back. Your turn. But it's, <laughs> yeah, it was, I, I felt uncomfortable. Hmm. Um, you know, it, and it, and it, was a, it was a pride event, wasn't it? It was, it was yes, a pride it was, event. Because the yeah, year before, tired, a pride there event. Had been, there'd been an event to raise money for Stonewall and for, it was the year of the Pulse shootings. So we'd done a pride party the year before and then we decided to do it the next year. <laughs> and uh, it, it was a, a pride theme party. I remember going to fabric shops and buying, you know, mm. rainbow fabrics and putting them up. And that should have been a moment of joy and a moment of safety and it was sadly turned into something not your so, worth. Uh, I don't you know have any business there myself uh, it's a place I've been to once in my life uh, you know I was never particularly fond of the atmosphere anyway Me uh, too. but I would like to add that the public response to the comments that I have seen have been largely supportive and uh, it's situations like this that demonstrate the need for a pride festival in the first place mm -hmm. yeah it's like that's the thing the reaction from the wider community who have come out in support of the lgbtqa community and also in anger at how it's how the, that company has handled it i think that shows so much progress as well and it shows how much support there is out there I genuinely think that um, discriminatory views are in a minority these days. I think they are an exception. They're just a bit loud about it when they want to do it. Mm. And they will get called out because it's not appropriate these days. And I think it's the calling out that makes it louder as well. But it's drawing attention to the fact that you know, no one deserves to put it. I that. think Danny would be turning his grave because I mean, I remember when Guys and Dolls first sort of hit the consciousness of straight people. Yeah. There's this great bar in town where it was really very relaxed and it was just like queues outside to yeah. get in. I Wasn't it amazing? They worked, Danny and Graham worked immensely hard to make a success of every venture they had. Because of course they had the Liverpool Arms first, yeah. then they what? went to Molly's and that was legendary. Oh. And then, of course, they moved into Douglas with Guys and Dolls when it first opened. And it was packed. Mm -hmm. Like, every time it was open, as you say, there were queues everywhere. It was so clean back then. Mm. Okay. Not quite now, but right. um, okay. I remember Graham would, um, the cleaning would get done, and you weren't, like, the staff weren't going home till everything was sparkling. Yeah. And that's how you do it. I remember if anything, any fights or handbags, as we call it, broke out, he Danny himself would come off the console yeah, and straight in there brilliant. and sort things out. Because I remember, like, when I when I first started, and I mentioned before, I had mm -hmm. the, the girls who were trouble. That was the moment I sort of had to learn, like, oh, God, I'm losing, I'm losing the crowd. Oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> what would Danny have done? And that was the moment it was like, what would he have done? And I was sort of stood there quietly panicking. And I thought... 
he'd make a spectacle of them. So I lowered the music down and I just grabbed the mic and went, ladies and gentlemen, behold the people who are ruining your night. The music will resume as soon as the monkeys have learned how to behave. And I made the whole crowd boo them and shame them into behaving. And it was fun. Like, And it was like, you can do it in a way that makes the room laugh. Mm. But that's exactly what Danny would have done. It was just, I, I needed to remember that in that moment to get control of the stage back. Um, I'm just trying to think back. Do you, what was it, the Shakespeare? Do you remember the, the pub, the Shakespeare? Yeah. They had to put a sign in their window yeah, saying, this, this is not a gay bar. This that's is not way a gay bar. Yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah. Well, thanks for that. I mean... Yeah. Nasty, nasty these people where was that, was that it's, it's long was, gone yeah. was a, a, a pub that the gays used and then the the, the, the old landlord and his wife left um, and then these new people came and saying this is no longer this is not a gay bar and AIDS free posted zone, the window AIDS free zone and all oh, that. about that one yeah, oh, yeah that, oh all these comments on. Do, do we need places these days what do you think do, you, do you, because aren't the apps taking over everything what do you think I, I wish. I, 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 I personally don't. The young ones may object. <laughs> um, we will. I don't. I think the pubs out there are brilliant. You know, are they ever go out? But when I do it, you know, there's no trouble. There's no hassle with me. We're the wrong age to go out these days. You know what I mean? But no. Yeah. I, and the young guys do blend in. Now, I mean, I know two young lads that. Have, that? <laughs> I, know, I know two young lads that met. In what you call an heterosexual bar, and I said, "Do you ever go to all the?" And they go, "No, no, we just go to the, the, all the normal pubs." I yeah. suppose. And I don't, but but maybe they want one. It's but you. it's who's going to put the money into yeah. a club mm. that's not taking a lot of money. Well, you know what uh, I mean? uh, major places are shutting down, aren't they? I mean, like the canal streets and things are yeah. having trouble because yeah. people don't necessarily want necessarily yeah. need to go to yeah. it that way anymore to meet people. I suppose. I think there's a um, what's forgotten kind of is that it's not just about a safe place we have our own culture as well like you know there's drag queens obviously uh, but there's like a whole cultural thing and drag kings and like all manner of performers there is a lgbtqa culture mm -hmm. which is so vibrant and so much fun so it's not just i mean there is an element of having safe places to go to but it's also about keeping our culture alive as well well, we've got BBC Three making a, a big success of RuPaul. Yeah. Uh, with her it's, drag show UK. It's I been think, amazing, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. RuPaul and the, the Ru girls have done such a huge job of bringing drag into the mainstream. But that's that's not all of LGBTQ culture. No. It's, it's, a, it's a part of it. Um, probably a very bit visible part of it. We need to get a Manx one on that show. <laughs> You going we on do. it? Are you going? Um, if you apply, I, uh, well, I, nothing actually, no. I actually did um, apply for season two, but I didn't get my mm. paperwork in in time. Yeah. Also, yeah. I need to learn how to sew before I'm going to do that, because uh, a will and a prayer and a glue gun just isn't going to cut it. There's some sniping comments in that program, isn't there? You've got to then cut oh, your Oh, I'm mind. ready. Are like, you? Yeah, I, I, I'm fully aware that because this is daytime, that yes. I have to... Uh, yes. Um, but uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. And I think with the... Uh, the online situations I've proved that I can dish it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. but, but you know, do you want to find people that you want to be with in a context? I mean, how, I'm, I'm trying to get to, to the bottom of this one. I mean, how? Yeah, uh, so it's less about having, you know, a drinking establishment that caters towards and more about having a place for the community to meet, to discuss things, to, you know, rant about all the difficulties of life. Uh, this, like you have your sports bars, you have your piano bars, uh, and you should have your gay bars as well. Yeah. But there should just be that atmosphere where you're allowed to be yourself, uh, where you are encouraged if you want to to meet people uh, who are, you know have similar views, share your culture, uh, and it's a, a bit yeah, I'm PDA if you want to, I suppose. As well. and, yeah. and, and PDA but, every once in a while, sure. Yeah. So you, you, you have the monthly do with the saddle. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sure Amy, I'm sure Amy would say. LGBTQ people are welcome anytime. Oh, so basically, yeah. there's your gay bar. You've got one. Well, that's that's the point. Do you need to label these things anymore? That's well, you don't. I don't think. I don't, I think, don't think need think to so. label label. But like, obviously, the first thing I do when I get to a city is head for the village, and see what's going on. The office but also, now. I was <laughs> Thursday night. I was at the weekly drag race viewing party at the bridge, and 
I actually had a little emotional moment. I was playing clothes and um, Fenella Beach hosts it and we watch that week's episode. We're on Drag Race Australia at the moment. And the turnout is really, really good. Yeah. And for Pride Month, they've got a big rainbow flag at the back. And the island's first drag king, Vincent Finery, uh, does poetry reading and was doing a performance um, after Drag Race. And I stood there and I just watched this room of our community sitting really loving the poetry that Vincent was doing. Vincent stood there in front of the rainbow flag and then Fenella Beach performing in front of the rainbow flag. And I was like, wow, this is, this is really amazing. You know, it was, there was a lot of love in that room and it was mm. great. And also with the rainbow night stand at the saddle, it's almost like the key is turning into an unofficial village yeah, some, yeah. <laughs> some nights of the month. But with the saddle, I have not seen that many members of our community in one room for a very long time. I haven't been so And there's such a cross section of ages <laughs> as well. Yeah. So there's, there's room for you, Lenny. I'm too lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you go and see me a chair. Do you, <laughs> do you go to the nightclubs? I haven't got that many nightclubs anymore, but you know, do you go out at all? Uh, I'm not a frequent. Uh, uh, I don't go out much, no. I prefer my small, insular communities. Mm. Uh, that's just my preference. Uh, that's nothing against any of the local establishments. I've been to the saddle a few times on their uh, rainbow nights. It's you know, a great time, it's worth doing. But most of the time, I prefer a quiet night. Mm. You're not a quiet person. I am no. not a quiet person, <laughs> no. Um, my my club of choice, more often than not, is the Outback, mm. because I like busy, and I think at this point, I know... Well, I think they, they label themselves gay-friendly, don't they? I mean, from all they the counts, they won't... I mean, they've got me on next month. Oh, right. Um, so, which is a gig I never expected to get, but it's, it's so friendly in there, and, you know, I think I know everyone in there, so... It's a logical place. I for think to a go. lot of gays do go there because yeah. Yeah, everyone I see post on Facebook said they're being. Mm. The back. I mean, it, well, it is it is full of us. Like, so honestly, it's, it's so it's got to be one. Oh, of that was like, I think that's good visibility. Then that's nothing that yeah. to, to be out and proud and all that sort of all these cliche yeah. words though. But you think that's important. But it's it's a good time, and um, you know, I think because there's so many different rooms to it as well. You've mm. got like the back bar, you've got the main bit, top bit, and then you've got the smoking area, which. It's a way of being in the party, whether you smoke or not, and being able to have a chat because it's mm. not too loud. And it is good fun, that's the thing. And also Peggy's as well is is super welcoming. Right. Um, just to finish this section, um, I'm sure you all watched uh, It's a Sin, Channel I 4. Seen it oh yet. my. What? I, I'm behind. You have had your gate card back in at this right. My watch list got bigger okay. during okay. lockdown. Well, <laughs> you would have watched it. I, I was crying oh, yeah. so much that. And then when, uh, when we but, found the connection to yeah, Dursley and Yeah, Dursley and McClinton should yeah. be mentioned just because yeah. he won't be here with us, you know. Yeah. Um, I got a snotty little message from his sister. <laughs> oh, are they not happy? Um, oh, saying that um, oh, to back off and oh. um, so we're not backing off. Right. Um, so it, it should be shining for pride. Well, to be honest, it was all over the UK yeah. papers, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, and uh, Radio Times yeah. did something about it. So I'm, I'm, I'm a newspaper running as well. I did realise there was a, an issue there, but that's, just, that's sad. But um, I'm sorry, but we have to talk about it. So in that he, sense, he, because, he should be mentioned because, yeah. uh, you know, he's, he, he was a man slab that, you know, mm. did well, you know, in theatre and films. Um, yeah. And I've seen the film, one, of the, one of his films he did. Just Ask for Diamond. Yes, I watched it. I on, went to the premiere in London. I, I, watched, I watched it on YouTube and I thought, this is really good. And yeah. then when you watch the La, the, the, the La thing, yeah. it didn't really show you about all the stuff he did. No. But he did a lot of stuff and very well respected. But isn't it amazing that sort of show has found a real um, audience and not just in LGBT and all that. So it's Every, but there's a Facebook page called La. Oh, well. right. And everyone's yeah. <laughs> buying the T-shirts and and some of the, t the money's going towards HIV and AIDS. Okay, so. well, yeah. just to wrap that up, I mean, obviously, people like Dursley, they went to do their thing in London because yeah. it would have been an actor, but he certainly uh, had lived his life he lived fully. It. He lived it. He really did. And, uh, you know. yeah, sad memories. And, well, good memories as well, but sad. You know. He had a happy life. Yes. He, you know, he, he left the land, which is probably was, in those days, very homophobic. Yeah. And he went to a city where it was freedom. Mm. You're free, you know. Even when I went to London in 16, 17, I was free. You know, go, I enjoyed myself. <laughs> well, we'll do that next section, the last section, because what I got here, he's claiming he's not going to do many more interviews, so we've got to grab every every moment. I want you to like, also ask this guy <laughs> questions, because it's, it's quite an astonishing story, isn't it, really? Anyway, that's it for part two. Thank you. Join us again soon.